Hey guys, welcome back to Program Hub and today in this episode, we're going to talk about the most demanded topic that was comparison between MacBook Pro M1 Pro versus the MacBook Air M1. So guys, today for development perspective and for programming, we'll be talking about the both of the machines, what's the difference between them, which one should you purchase as a beginner or as a professional. So we'll be having a look about the both the machines, both the laptops and their comparisons for various different things. So starting up with the very first thing for general programming, if you're going for general programming, there's absolutely not a lot of difference between the both of the machines. You can run C, C++, Python, Java or any other programming language very easily on both of the machines without any delay into compilation or execution. So both of the machines are pretty much fine. There's no big difference between them. Coming to the web development either, there's no pretty much big difference. So there might be some few um, like a uh, minor seconds of a difference, but no huge differences between both of the machines. Now let's come down to one of the most demanded things like the reason why we purchase in Mac OS, not Windows is Xcode. So guys, we have tested hugely Xcode development on both of the machines and we have got some crazy results over here. So now when we tried to build a project that wasn't by the way a completely stress test onto the development so we tried to push the limits of both of the machines to the extent where we can actually get the best of the best results so we took a project from github that is actually for the benchmarking xcode so we took that project and tried to run on both of the machines with the environment setting so the build time that we got on the macbook air m1 was around 2 minutes 42 seconds that is 162 seconds in total and while the code was compiling it took around 80 to 90 percent of cpu utilization along with that the memory that is the ram consumption was around three to four gigabytes and coming down to the macbook pro m1 pro so the results change over here drastically now in this machine the complete compilation and the build time that it took was 100 seconds that's it that means 1 minute 40 seconds and during the time of compilation and building the project it the cpu consumption was around 80 to 90 percent and the memory consumption that is the ram consumption was around 8 to 9 gigabytes so we can see that in both of the machines the ram consumption was around 50 percent this machine that is the macbook air m1 this is with the base model variant in which we have got 8 gigabytes of ram and this is the base model that comes up within 16 gigabytes of ram so in both of the machines the ram consumption was around 50 percent there was uh, like nearly no pressure no load onto the memory but yes the cpu was into constant utilization and it took around like more than 80 to 90 percent of the consumption now if we just compare this both of the machines for xcode development so we can say that there's pretty much 50 to 60 percent increase in performance when we go with the m1 pro but m1 also performs really good if we just look at the timings that is the 100 seconds in m1 pro and 162 seconds in m1 so that's not a lot of difference but yeah if we go on for bigger projects than this so the time gap will be huge that is a 50 to 60 percent at least there's a difference between both of the machines now getting to the next thing if you want to even test out android so we also got some benchmarks for androids by the way installation of the android studio in both of the machines takes the same steps and will be very soon coming out with a new tutorial for how can you set up android studio and by the way if you want that video to come up very soon do comment it down below so before actually running the build time test in both of the machines there is one significant thing that actually matters the build time that is the java installation so for example if you have java that is the intel variant so the build time goes higher and if you have java that is available for the native version arm processors that is for the apple variant so the build time is lower so we tried testing the both of the java installations so firstly when we tried testing out with the java for intel so the build time that it took in m1 that is the macbook air it was it was around 5 minute 26 seconds and the build time that it was taken into the m1 pro was 4 minutes 39 seconds so there is a difference of all about 50 seconds in both of the both of the build times now during this period of build time there was actually rosetta working in the background for translation of the codes because the java variant that we used was for the intel based macbooks not for the 
ARM processor. Then after that, we switch the Java variant from Intel to ARM processor that is for the Apple Silicon. If and if by the way you want to download it, the link is down into the description below. Now let's come down to the test results and the test results are really amazing over here. We tried to test for a multiple of times in both of the machines so that we can get a more better results. So first we'll be talking about the MacBook Air M1 and then let's get to the MacBook Pro M1. So guys, first thing over here. So when we first tried to build the project in this MacBook Air M1, the timing was 3 minutes 23 seconds. After that, we tried it again once again, the timing was 2 minutes 25 seconds. And finally, the best time that we got in this MacBook Air M1 for the Android Studio build time was 2 minutes 1 second. And now when we switch that same project to the M1 Pro, the build times were considerably lower. First time, as compared to 3 minutes 23 seconds, it was 2 minutes. So there we can see almost a, a difference of all, all about 40%. Now when we come down to the second build, the time in M1 processor was 2 minutes 25 seconds, whereas as compared to the M1 Pro, it was just 1 minute 38 seconds. And finally, running on to the third time, we get the best time for M1 Pro, that is the 1 minute 34 seconds. So 1 minute 34 seconds was the best time in M1 Pro as compared to the best time in M1, that was 2 minutes of 1 second. So there is a difference of all about, we can say 30 to 40% in each of the compilation and building time. So if you're doing any project, if you're making up any project on Android Studio for Android mobile phones or Android platforms, so the build time will actually differ from 30 to 40% and that's really a great margin. Simulator and the emulator performances in both of the machines. So if we talk about all about the Android emulators, in both of the machines, the Android emulators work really fast there is a very slight difference in the loading time if we just boot it up over here and also boot it up over here it takes just a slight difference if i just show it to you so if i get to android okay and in this machine either if you get to the android so let's try building just let's get it over here to avd manager and same over here so let's try to cold boot both of the emulators at to the same time and have a look at to the difference. So three, two, one, and here we go. So you can see that this emulator has already started. By the way, the emulator on the M1 is just starting up. So yeah, so on the M1 it is done and on the M1 Pro it's now done. So there is a slight difference between the loading time. By the way, you must be amazed that the M1 is actually performing better now for the emulator results. But that is all just a difference in the matter of the time. So if we just close this up, okay, if we close this up and let's try one more time. So sometimes the emulator actually runs faster in the M1 Pro and sometimes the emulator runs faster in the M1. So there's no pretty much big difference between the emulator loading time. Let's do it for one more time. Let's do it. So cold boot, cold boot and three, two, one, here we go. It's already starting. Here also it's starting. Let's see. It started. It's done. So there's just a fraction of second of a difference in between the both of the emulators loading time. So that's clearly we can see that in M1 and also in the M1 Pro both of the, the machines emulators are running really great. So that's just a slight difference, marginal difference, no big difference. So clearly we cannot make any results out of that. Okay, now let's come down back to what we have to talk all about is the Flutter. So if you are actually using Flutter, one of the most used and most popular, by the way, frameworks. So we also tried building Flutter on both of the machines because I specifically use a lot of Flutter apps so i actually develop more into flutter so i'll be talking all about that so we also tried testing flutter build time in both of the machines the build time that we got in the m1 was all around 78 seconds 
and that on the M1 Pro was all around 66 seconds. So there's an, just a little bit of a marginal difference of all about 12 seconds between the build times. And that is by far the best results what we have got. Second time when we tried to test building time in both of the machines, in the M1 Pro it was 3 seconds whereas in the M1 it was just 4 seconds, 1 second more. That is just a negligible time. But yes, this results does not matter a lot because there is just a 20% of a difference. So 20% of a difference just not makes it a right sense to switch to in such a heavy and an expensive machine. Now getting to another things, we also tried testing for all different things like Cocoa Pods, Homebrew for all those things. Both of the machines are performing really well. So guys, this question was actually demanded by you for only one and one reason that should we switch to the M1 Pro or should we go with an M1 MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro that will be with 8 GB or with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the one thing that i would really like to like recommend it to all of you if you're a student if you're just getting into college and if you're just getting into programming so for your use this m1 macbook air is still the best macbook so if you just want to get started with programming so you just don't need to get with this kind of a machine but because this is an actually recommended or made for professionals so the people who are professionals into development because this has also got a more faster GPU that is actually made for the people who are all trying to work on the more bigger projects that requires the GPU power but this machine this machine is also in one of the very best machines for being an intermediate programmer or also being a professional programmer because I've been doing professional programming on this machine from a quite of a long period of time so in no way M1 is not a good laptop to go with if you're just starting out your CSE degree or any kind of a university degree for computer science or anything for programming, you can just go around with having a MacBook Air and that will serve you with all the things that you just need. So guys, this had been the complete difference. We talked about all things. And lastly, coming down to one more thing, that's one more big difference between both of the machines. That is the display connectivity. So many of you are bothered with what is the display connectivity in both of the machines. So guys. M1 can be connected to one external monitor whereas the M1 Pro this model that is the base model 16 inch this can be connected to two different external monitors by the way if you just upgrade it up to the M1 Max that I won't recommend you being a developer or a programmer you don't need to just switch up to the M1 Max because the CP power in the M1 Pro as well as the M1 Max is just the same that is a 10 core CPU but there is a difference between the GPU. So you don't need higher GPU performance until unless you are not using it. So I want that is the reason I won't recommend it to you to go with the M1 Max model. So here you can connect two external monitors if you need two external monitors so you can go up with the M1 Pro model or else M1 Air is one of the best things that you can go up with. So guys, this had been the complete difference for programming perspective. And by the way, if I have missed any question or if you have any more question that I can answer you, so please leave it into the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer that. So guys, if you liked our video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel and meet you in the next episode. Till then, goodbye.